This is a prime number C, a mathematical construction that separates primes from the rest of the numbers. The very first prime number C was devised in the 3rd century before Common Era by Erastotines of Cyrene, a Greek polymath and the chief librarian of the Library of Alexandria. In modern times, the prime number sieve is the fastest way to generate prime numbers up to a specified integer limit. So how does it work? How do you construct one? And how come math can even look this cool? If I ask you to give me all the primes up to the number 100, how would you do this? The most straightforward method is probably going number by number, checking whether they're a prime or not. This would require you to go over all of the 100 numbers and perform a prime factor decomposition for each one of them. Quite tedious. What if I told you that instead there's a way to give me the same list of primes by only considering the first 10 numbers? Yes, that's exactly what the prime number sieve does. The main idea of a prime number sieve is to separate the composite numbers from the primes and avoid any integer factorizations. Let's take a list of our 100 numbers. We start at 2, since 1 is not a prime by definition. Because 2 is only divisible by itself and 1, we know it's prime. Now any number that's a multiple of 2 will be composite, so we can cross out all the multiples of 2 from our list. Next we go to 3. Since it wasn't crossed out as a multiple of 2, it must also be prime. Like with 2, any multiples of 3 will be composite, so we cross them out from our list as well. Continuing to 4, it's crossed out, so we know it's composite and we move to 5. At this point, you probably understand the trick. Mark 5 as prime, cross out all the multiples, move on to 6, already crossed out. Do the same for 7, 8, 9, 10, and at 11, we can already stop and be certain that all the remaining numbers are prime. Why? This is because 11 times 11 is 121, which is more than 100, and so for 11 to be a factor of some number less than 100, its other factors must be less than 11. Since this is the case, we must have already crossed out all the composite numbers that have a factor of 11 in them. The same logic holds true for any prime number factors greater than 11, thus all the remaining numbers are primes. Wonderful, right? We have come up with all the primes up to 100, but we only needed to consider the first 10 digits in the sequence. If we wanted all the primes up to 1000, we would only need to perform the sieving procedure up to the number 32. In general, if we want all the primes up to n, we only need to perform the sieving from 2 to the ceiling of square root of n. And yes, we do cross out numbers beyond the ceiling of square root of n, but that's just a simple procedure of hopping a constant distance from one number to the next. Way simpler than performing a prime factorization, which is our alternative. So that's how prime number sieves work, and why they are so fast. Now, how do we make it visual? In one of my previous videos, I showed the cool construction that used the parabola y equals x squared to visually multiply any two numbers. We'll use the same trick here and combine it with the idea that composite numbers can be expressed as products of primes or smaller composite numbers. Let's start by plotting the parabola y equals x squared and rotating it by 90 degrees. Now if we extend the line from each integer on the y-axis to the right, we'll find the points on the parabola that correspond to the squares of those integers. A line drawn between any two of these points will cut the x-axis at another integer point. This point will be the product of the corresponding integers on the y-axis. To see why this is always the case, have a look at my previous video. Using this property, Let's draw a line between all possible pairs of points on the opposing sides of the parabola. What we end up with is a visual prime number C. All the composite numbers are crossed out and only the primes remain. Honestly, very freaking cool. See you in the next one.